In Life is Strange, a college-bound girl is faced with dozens of conflicting situations when she discovers that she has the ability to rewind time. What's up everybody, it's just George here, and today I'm reviewing Life is Strange, so let's get started. To be honest, Life is Strange has a lot of bad elements in it. However, it has equally good elements, and the ending of the game makes up for a lot of the mistakes that were made. So I'm going to discuss all of my criticisms first. The graphics are very subpar compared to all the other next-gen games. It's small and noticeable things like people's hair not moving and the textures looking a bit flat. Also, the animation isn't high quality either. The characters would have an occasional mishap in a cutscene, or when you're waiting to make a decision, the character in front of you would wobble around. It really distances the player from the game and reality. There is too much dialogue in the entirety of the game. There are five episodes overall, and they are too long. The story itself isn't long, but the game makes it feel very long, considering all the useless cutscenes and additional dialogue. My final complaint is related to the main character, Max. Her actress doesn't fit the character at all. Hannah Tell, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, does not show the emotion of Max whatsoever. She underacts in the whole game, and her acting made the experience of the game to be very boring. Now, I can discuss all of the great qualities of this game. First of all, the style of Life is Strange perfectly fits the title. There will be moments that feel surreal and esoteric. All of it is unnatural and it works very well. In a certain way, Life is Strange feels similar to an independent movie. The very realistic tone fits perfectly on top of a very unrealistic style. Besides the actress from Max, every other character is portrayed in a great way. The way that most of the characters react to the events happening in the course of the story is very impressive. Here's a fair warning, we are now entering the spoiler section of the review, so if you have not finished the game, then please leave the video now. Alright, keep in mind that I'm only going to focus on the Sacrifice Chloe ending of the game, mostly because I simply don't care about the Sacrifice Arcadia Bay ending. I really feel like it was the best written way to end the game. The story and characterization is great. Every character evolves throughout the story, and it's very noticeable. My favorite character is Nathan. He is definitely one of the more complex characters. He has human desires and needs just like all of us. It's just that he has extreme psychological issues going all the way back to his childhood. He's an artist and he sees things in a way that other people don't. The mistakes that he makes are what ultimately lead him to his punishment. Nathan isn't just another villain, he's a person. In the beginning of the game, Chloe is incredibly unlikable. But in the end of the game, she realizes how much of a lousy person she is. She learns that everyone has a destiny, and hers was to be sacrificed. She played a significant role in the overall idea of the game. The main idea of Life is Strange is that being selfish leads you to your own demise. The game also tells you that we all have a role in life, even if it isn't a good one. You have to be willing to make sacrifices in your life, because if you don't, then your choices will simply be another form of evil. The reason why Chloe is a great character is because she isn't a good person, and she eventually realizes that. Life is Strange has some bad qualities to it, but the good qualities outweigh the bad ones in multiple ways. If you're willing to experience the entire game, then you're in for a treat. It's one huge metaphor for how each individual person lives out their lifestyle. All of these reasons are why I give this game a 9 out of 10. Be sure to check out the TechSub channel for great videos like this one. It's just George here, signing off. Peace out!